It began as a typical Thursday. The sunlight kissed my eyelids good morning. I remember climbing out of bed, putting music on, loading the dishwasher. Only when my apartment was spotless, when I stepped into the bathtub, washed yesterday out of my hair, like the walls of my home were decorated with frames, bookshelves, photos. I'd decorate myself, hang a necklace on my chest, hook earrings in, apply lipstick like paint, sweep my hair back. Just your typical Thursday. We ended up at a get together with friends. At the end, you asked if I need a ride home. And I said, yes, because our dads work for the same company and you'd been to my place for dinner many times. But I should have known when you began to confuse kind conversation with flirtation, when you told me to let my hair down, when instead of driving me home toward the bright intersection of lights and life, you took a left to the road that led nowhere. I asked where we were going. You asked, was I afraid? And that's when my voice jumped over the edge of my throat, landed at the bottom of my belly and hid for months. All the different parts in me turned the lights off, shut the blinds, locked the doors. I hid at the back of some upstairs closet of my mind while someone came and broke the windows. You, someone kicked the front door in. You took everything. You, someone took me. It was you who dove into me with a fork and a knife, eyes glinting with starvation like you hadn't eaten in weeks. I was a hundred and ten pounds of fresh meat you'd skin and gut with your fingers like you were scraping the inside of a cantaloupe clean. I screamed for my mother as you nailed my wrist to the ground, turned my breast to bruised fruit. This home is empty now. No gas, no electricity, no running water. The food is rotten from head to foot. I am layered in dust, fruit flies, webs, bugs. Someone called a plumber. The stomach is backed up. I've been vomiting since. Call the electrician, these eyes won't light up. Call the cleaners to wash me up and hang me to dry. When you broke into my home, it never felt like mine again. I can't even let a lover in without being sick. I lose sleep after the first day, lose my appetite, become more bone and less skin, forget to breathe. Every night, my bedroom becomes a psych ward where panic attacks wake men playing doctors to keep me calm. Every lover who touches me ends up feeling like you. Their fingers, you, mouths, you, until they're not even the ones on top of me anymore. It's you. And I am so tired of doing things your way. It isn't working. I've spent years trying to figure out how I could have stopped it, but the sun can't stop the storm from coming. The tree can't stop the axe. I can't blame me for having a hole the size of your madhead in my chest anymore. It's too heavy to carry your guilt. I'm setting it down. I am tired of decorating this place with your shame as if it belongs to me. It's too much to walk around with what your hands have done if it's not my hands that have done it. The truth comes to me suddenly. After years of rain, the truth comes like sunlight 
pouring through that open window. It takes a long time to get here, but it all comes full circle. It takes a broken, twisted person to come searching for meaning between my legs, but it takes a whole, complete, perfectly designed person to survive it. It takes monsters to steal souls and fighters to reclaim them. This home is what I came into this world with. Was the first home, will be the last home. You can't take it. There is no space for you. No welcome mat. No extra bedroom. I'm opening all the windows, airing it out putting roses in a vase in the middle of that kitchen table, lighting a candle, loading the dishwasher with my thoughts until they're spotless. And then I plan to step into the bathtub, wash yesterday out of my hair, put music on, sit back, put my feet up, and enjoy this typical Thursday. For some of us, there's nothing really typical or ordinary about a so-called typical Thursday or typical day. It's a really powerful reminder of how much of a blessing it is for me personally to have these so-called typical, ordinary, normal, boring days. When you look around, just know Almost everyone you see has at least one secret that would break your fucking heart. And we should try our very best to be kind and compassionate to one another and to admit we don't know everything about other people. We know very little. We know the tip of the iceberg. I can't just encourage people to share their stories and then not share my own. So I do hope that this makes you maybe think twice before assuming something about someone or passing a judgment. I hope, hope this will open up the doors for someone else to maybe share their story or know that they're not alone or um, just to see that it's okay. We can talk about our feelings. We can talk about our experiences. Um, it doesn't have to be this like shameful secret that we carry around with a heavy burden wrapped around us for the rest of our lives. Every time I share my stories, Every time I make myself vulnerable, as scary as it is, and sometimes I wonder, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, I feel like I shed another layer of shame that I've carried with me for a long, long time because that's what you carry with you when you have to keep secrets. I don't have to name names to say, hey, these are the stories and this is what I've experienced. Um, I have a right to share my story. And every time I do, I know, I feel like, I am helping pave the way for someone else, and I am also unburdening myself by shedding the weight of shame that comes with keeping secrets. It's not my shame to carry. I'm not the one who did something wrong, and I'm not going to feel wrong for telling my story. So that's about all I have to say to you. Much love to you all, sending you so much support. Um, you know, whether you're going through something, you've been through something, you're finally getting to a point where you can share what you've been through. And um, I just, I have a lot of respect for people who go through a lot of shit, but don't become a shitty person. Respect for those who are willing to share their stories and their wisdom, you know, what they've learned from going through what they've gone through with other people. Uh, um, all of you out there who are doing that, um, just know that I have a lot of love, respect, and appreciation for you. Okay, well, until next time, take care and much love.